Hey friends, I hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, it's gonna be my best in beauty for the month of October. Sometimes when I do these videos, I do have a few duds to share. Just in addition to all the things that I've been loving over the course of the month, just a couple kind of warnings to put out there. This month, I've got like an even split. I've got six things I wanted to recommend, and lo and behold, I've come up with six things that I think um, didn't work out so well. I hope this is informative. The things that I love, guys, I'm gonna blow your mind with a particular product in this video. You're gonna see the way I've used this and you're gonna be like, what? So excited. Okay, first thing I wanna share is actually my lip product because I feel like lip products always kinda get put off till last in videos like this because I think we think about the process we go through with our makeup and it's like, okay, what's the primer I wanna share? What's the foundation or whatever? Well, I'm gonna start with the lip because these are important. Oh, hello. They're from The Balm, and they are called the Balm Jour Creamy Lip Stains. I purchased these two off of their website. I just looked around and I was like, oh, I didn't know they made creamy lip stains. I need to try those. Well, what the heck is a creamy lip stain anyway? My best description of these would be that they go on feeling thin, shiny, glossy, and then they become like a cream lipstick with staying power. I have the Konichi wash shade on today, and it's like a peachy, kind of nudie color. There's a nice little bit of depth to it. I think it's a great everyday shade, but when you first like look at that shade on the tip of the wand, it looks like lip gloss, it feels like lip gloss, but then give it like 15 minutes of wear time on your lips, and it stops feeling so thin, it becomes a lip gloss with real cling. I think what they're trying to get across here with the name of it being a creamy lip stain is that this is something that feels like a gloss at first and then it becomes a bit more one with the lips and definitely has enhanced staying power compared to a gloss. I wouldn't say these are anywhere close to the staying power of like a liquid lipstick or something like that. There's still so much creaminess happening here but after like that little 10-15 minute period it's less creamy than when you started. It's super comfortable and light and as you can see there's still a little shine there but it's like it turned into a cream lipstick or something something. I don't know. It's really cool. I want all the shades. I'm going to go back and purchase more. But the two that I have are Konichiwa and then I also have this one called Hello. And this is a little bit more of a berry pink. Gorgeous, you know, right up my alley. But there are more pretty shades in the lineup and I want to try them. Here's another thing I do on occasion. And I don't know if this is the best skincare advice, but I occasionally use this as a face mask. And I think I talked about this years ago. Somebody tipped me off to the idea. And it is probably the most refreshing thing you can do to your face uh, every so often. It's Noxzema as a face mask. So you just slather this stuff on. It has that eucalyptus kind of menthol sort of scent. It's really strong, but you put it all over your face. It's super cooling. It makes your skin feel very soft once you rinse it off. I don't leave it on my skin for more than 10 minutes, but just goop it on thick and then rinse, and you actually feel kind of softened, moisturized, but really, really refreshed. It's just the classic clean, original deep cleansing cream from Noxzema, so I occasionally use it. It's one of those things that I do, and I forget to talk about it because I do it at nighttime, and it's not like sitting here on my table, so unless I on purpose bring it up here, it might get forgotten. Now, does anybody else use anything from Noxzema? I know my mom for years has used Noxzema for various purposes, but it is very tingly, it's cooling, and if you do leave that on your skin for any amount of time, you really feel like so rejuvenated when you wash it off. But my skincare routine right now has kind of gone through a transition. I mean, mask-wise, I'll use anything. I'll use some Noxzema. Some other night I might use a sheet mask, but I actually have a lot of drunk elephant skincare that's been sent to me and it's now been about a week. I've been using that stuff morning and night. Obviously it will take some time to understand if those products are delivering on claims and actually doing what they say they'll do for my skin, but just letting you know that's where my skincare situation stands right now. I'm using some really nice stuff with the occasional Noxzema mask. If you guys saw my products I changed my mind about video, you've already seen me talk about this a little bit, but um, I want to mention it again because it's definitely a favorite of the month and it's the Farsal Solly Skin Tune Blur Perfecting Primer Serum. And if you are a feel person, if the experience of applying something to your skin and how that feels and how that perhaps retexturizes the skin, if the whole application of things really means something to you, I think you might really enjoy this. I think what we run into a lot with anything that claims to blur is sort of a thickness. A layer of primer that feels somewhat fluffy at times, maybe it starts almost balm-like and it has to be worked down 
down and kind of broken down on the skin or melted down in some way. This stuff starts thin. It looks kind of milky creamy. And when you start rubbing it in, you're like, okay, creamy, 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 smooth. Okay, I get it now. Once it gets all blended in, you feel so evened out from a texture standpoint. And I do think it makes a difference in the appearance of foundation that's sitting on top of it. And I like the lightness because I sometimes go for a thick full coverage foundation. You know, some days I go for something thin, some days I go for something that is like matte, full coverage, not playing around. So pairing that with a thinner primer that's not adding this additional weight to the skin, you know, is kind of a good feeling. And it literally feels good as you blend it in. Like it's a really cool experience. But the biggest deal about it is probably that it actually does affect the look of your foundation, I think, when you get it on top. And that was kind of my misconception at first. Like, okay, this primer feels kind of nice and cool, but what is it actually doing? I'm not sure that it's doing anything. But as you continue to use it, I think that characteristic of it will stand out for you. Primarily for me, it's the pores on the nose and sides of the nose, and it almost like blurs out, mattifies, gets you really prepped before the foundation goes on. I have had some questions about this powder. This is the Laura Mercier um, Translucent Powder Glow. I'm a big lover of the regular translucent powder, and they don't look all that different, do they? This is just a little more mirrored on the lid than this one is. I love the regular version, like setting the under eye. It's just an amazing loose powder. I don't feel like I need to use a lot of it. It mattifies, it perfects. It does exactly what I want it to do. And now they've put out this version that has a little bit of glow in it. And it's subtle. It is the kind of thing that you could apply like a highlight if you want to. I'm not even wearing any highlight today because I want to put this on and let you see it. But here's what I kind of like to do with this. I'll tap a little into the lid. You can see the powder there. And I just pick some up with a blush brush. So a little bit bigger than my standard highlight brush. And at the end of my look, I just kind of go over the whole face. I'll even go right over the nose because I feel like what I end up with is a gentle, natural kind of finish all over my face. I should have titled this video, Products That Are Hard To Describe. I didn't make myself less matte, but I gave my skin this subtle sheen that is so not like highlightery, but it's just got a little bit of glow. Let's concentrate a little bit more right in here. It's just the most gentle thing, but it's kind of like, I see it as at the end of my look, let's make this look like the natural surface of skin, you know? Did things start to get too matte? Let's just give it a kiss of luminosity at the end. And that's what I feel like this powder does for me. I would love to hear like the ways you like to use this or the places on your skin that you use it. But for me, I kind of like it all over. Like I said, I will even go over the nose because it doesn't demattify. It doesn't deliver unsightly flecks of shimmer. It just gives the skin that lit from within quality. So I have really been enjoying that. Really, really hard to describe though. I got a biggie coming up, guys, so just a second. Did you guys know Too Faced had a miniature peach palette called Tickled Peach? There it is. It's cute. Obviously, you take a theme that's already really cute, and then you make it mini, it gets even cuter. Cuteness factor is at about a 12 here. This is a mini peach palette. It smells like peach. This mini palette has one, two, three beautifully textured mattes and several just great, soft, smooth shimmers as well. If you were a fan back in the day of Bare Minerals Happy Place, like, meet your new friend, because this has that beautiful kind of purpley plum. You've got your neutrals. Everything is kind of warm, and there is a very clear peachy direction that things can go. It has a little mirror that is totally usable. Anytime I pop this open, I want to use it. And I've got this on my eyes as well today. I've got these two peach shades on my lid. I use that in the crease, that in the crease as well. Um, this kind of in my outer corner and buffed out. The dark brown and the medium brown on my lower lash line. I mean, I love the look. I feel like I can get actually quite a few different looks out of this little eight color palette. It's kind of like too Faced made their own little Viseart Petite Pro, you know? Side note here before I get into some real juicy details. They also have a sugar cookie mini palette that's sold at Ulta. So this is Sephora. This is Ulta. I don't love this one so much. There were a couple of shades in this that kind of disappointed me. This one's kind of flaky and hard to build up. This shade here I feel like should deliver a lot more than it does. Now it does kind of smell like sugar cookies. And I like that, but it just doesn't deliver quite as much brilliance as this peach one does. I don't know. I like the peachy warmth going on here. If you're not a warm person, maybe steer clear. But I would like to blow your mind in a few ways here. Take your e.l.f. small tapered brush, go into this matte creamy shade right here, pick up a little of that, and just absolutely perfect your under eye area for a second. 
beautiful. This is not going to work for every skin tone, but it's just a little happy accident that I uncovered with this product for me. You know how a real hot thing to do was to get the Wet n Wild single in brulee and kind of set your under eye with that? This totally reminds me of that. It's a beautiful soft texture. These are just powders, guys. They can work in a lot of ways. Also, this shade right here. Maybe you want to just do a little contour with that, huh? It can handle it. There's nothing wrong with that. A little gentle bronzing, no problem. This is one of the best finds in here, that shade as blush. Been wearing it as blush throughout the whole video, but I'm gonna add a little more. Oh, mama, so good. Mm. Juicy, peachy, little bit of sheen. But is there a shade in there that works as a highlight? You bet, it's this color right here. Little golden, peachy glow. <laughs> yep. This is a cool find because this is a tiny palette and it can do all of your face steps. And I wasn't really struggling to even put a brush in those. That golden glow, that peachy blush, a little contour, a little under eye setting powder, all in this. This could even be a blush or highlight for someone as well, but all in all, you cover up half that palette, you've got a face palette in there as well. Boom. The first thing that started this snowball was just realizing that this shade would make a gorgeous blush. And so I tried it and then it was like, oh, and there's a highlight. Oh, I could use that as bronzer. How about under eye setting powder? So it's a pretty cool thing. It's great quality. I also looked at it side by side with my full size Too Faced Peach palette and there's not any real overlap with the shades. Everything in here is a unique color in this tickled peach. So I think it's great. And it also had really good ratings on Sephora's website as well. Speaking of Sephora, Sephora. Another thing that I got that I am loving, I think it's such a fun little idea, especially for the holidays, is this Sephora Favorites Mystery Lip Kit. So cool. Here's what you know you're going to get in here. Um, a Bite Multi Stick in Almond. You know you're going to get a Kat Von D Everlasting Liquid Lipstick in Ludwig. And then you're going to get a surprise. Would this not be a fun thing to put in stockings or something? You also get a cute little pin. Like mine is a Sephora shopping bag with a little palette and some makeup. Maybe I will even put this on my stocking this year. But I love lip minis and I love non-limited edition lip minis. But a Bite Multi Stick is extra cool because this can be your cheek color, this can be your lip color, this shade called Almond is very pretty. It can be dark, it can be blended out, sheared out to a more neutral place as well. I'll pop up a picture of me wearing this, but I love this color from Kat Von D. I shared this with my girl Erica. She was like, I need a light nude with a hint of pink. And she asked me that question on the very day I had been wearing this because she wanted it in the liquid lipstick form for somebody that she was gonna do makeup on. And I'm like, it's this, it is so this shade. And then I'll tell you the surprise one that I got. I got a NARS Power Matte Lip Pigment in the shade Star Woman. So this is a beautiful little red matte kind of liquid lip color type thing. But I just wanted to give that a shout out because I think this is so cool. Um, if you don't know about the other options that could potentially come in here as your wild card product, it lists them on the back of my bag, but I don't want to give that away for anybody who might receive this as a gift. So you know you're getting these two, the Bite and the Kat Von D. And then what will the other mini be? Who knows? Knows. I think that's fun. It comes in one of these little resealable bags and again you get a pin as well. So guys those are my six hits. Now we're going to move on to the misses. The first one here is kind of tough for me because there's something I really love about this packaging. Look at this It Girl palette from It Cosmetics. Do you see what's happening in there? There's glitter suspended in some sort of liquid and it's like falling from top to bottom. So you keep turning it. I've seen this with a couple palettes so far this holiday season. Bobbi Brown's got something else that does this. But isn't that so cool, so fun, so exciting? And then you open the palette and here it is. I'm sorry, but I'm not nearly as enthused about the inside as I am the outside, and that's where the problem lies. It is their naturally pretty eyeshadow stuff here, and then you also have a Bye Bye Pores blush. It says Rosé, and I like this. This is actually a really pretty blush. I love the kind of neutral quality that it has, and then you work up to a real highlight shade toward the top of that ombre. So that's really beautiful. You've got all these cool mattes on this side. All the shimmers are over here. I was underwhelmed by this 
gold shade here. I was really not that impressed with the way that applied, but it is kind of one of the statements of the palette, the gold and then also the rusty red down here. So you've got some real warmth, but then all your mattes are so cool. So I set up my crease with my matte mid-tones and then I started popping on gold and rust and I just thought it looked kind of strange. Like they should have given us at least one warmer matte to make all that kind of blend into one. I kind of saved the look by putting some of this bronzy shade in the crease, but even that's not all that warm either. It's not a terrible palette because there are some things in it that I love. I love that highlight shade over here. That's beautiful. It's so smooth. It's like shimmery, but not too shimmery. It's just awesome. And these mattes do feel really good as well. If you like that naturally pretty formula, there's an overall quality to those that you're going to enjoy. But to me, it's just kind of the color combo. While this shade, I think, can hop over and play with these colors nicely, so can this shade, maybe even that shade. You got this golden rust that are just kind of screaming, look at me, in this overall very muted palette. And I just don't think they look so good coming in with these colors over here. Now, I am crossing my fingers that they put out another one of those beauty book type things for QVC this year. I think they call it Most Wish For, and it, it contains a lot in one place, and I'm curious to see what the quality is, what the products are that might be in there. But this year's It Girl palette, aside from that brilliant um, lid that they've got going on here, it's just kind of underwhelming. Here's another thing, guys, that I'm not really going for, and it's not that the products are so awful, but I feel like the claims are way off base. This is called the Lilac Love Set from Becca, and I like when they put together these duos. They're usually like $25, and you might get a shimmering skin perfector, maybe paired with a liquid shimmering skin perfector. This year, they've put a glow gloss in with this highlight, and they're calling it Lilac Love. And I thought, oh my gosh, I love that prismatic amethyst um, kind of lilac-y highlight that they've made full size before. I thought maybe this is gonna be a lot like that. This little highlight is called Lilac Geode, and yes, it is so, so cute. And your lip gloss is also called Lilac Geode. But I got news for you. There's nothing lilac in either of these. If this is anything, this is rose gold. I mean, look at this. Look at this highlight, my friends. It's just like light golden pink. That's all it is. And it's the same with the gloss, and the gloss is really quite sheer. There have been many glow glosses that I have liked. I think it is a good formula. It's a comfortable formula. There's nice shine. But literally, the only lilac thing about this is that they chose to put it in a lilac packaged container there. That's it. It is sadly a really far cry from Prismatic Amethyst, and this usually isn't a shade that's super up my alley. You know, something that really goes pinky and has that little bit of a lilac-y shift, but this is the most ultimate brightening thing ever. I've had this for quite some time. I've talked about it before, about how it really surprised me how much I'm into that, and I was just really hoping that this would be along those lines, and a really good way to sample and try it. Bottom line, it's a rose gold duo. They named it Lilac Love, and I don't get it. But this story does does end happily, my friends. They have a kit from Sephora called Becca Glow. It's $40 and they call it the Macaroon Collection. And you can see here you've got four mini highlights. And guess what one of them is? Prismatic Amethyst. You also get Rose Quartz, Vanilla Quartz, and Opal, and I like all of those. It's a really cute kind of compact sampling of those, but I don't think you'll go through them anytime soon. I have some Becca minis that I have just had for so long, because really a little goes a long way with those highlights, and I love the Shimmering Skin Perfector formula. It's great. But I was just a little thrown with that Lilac Love set, and if you are thinking, gosh, that Prismatic Amethyst sounds really good, there's a mini in here. But I have one more thing that I discovered I'm really not loving from Becca. I mentioned in the products I've changed my mind about video, how that Volcano Goddess palette really didn't work so much for me overall. There were some parts of the palette that I worked with for a while and I thought, oh my gosh, these are glorious. And then I brought in some of their statement shades and it just wasn't happening for me. But the highlight that comes with that collection is called Gold Lava. And I don't know what it is about this. This doesn't even feel to me really like normal shimmering skin perfector texture. It feels really light and dusty. There's a bit more of a flaky quality to this one, and also it's way, way too yellow for me to enjoy that on my skin. This is probably my least favorite highlight that I've ever used from Becca. It's just so gold, so yellowy gold. And then to top it off, it's a formula that I don't feel like is as good as everything else they've made. Has anybody else had a super 
super drying experience with Tarte lip paint because I wore one on Halloween and I it was like the darkest shade that they have. I used it in my Scarecrow look. It's kind of a pretty color, like a really, really dark near black burgundy. And that stuff was so incredibly drying on me. It felt like kind of a lip shrink wrap. And I felt like I've used some of those here and there in the past and haven't had quite as bad of an experience. But that was one of those experiences where your lips feel dry with it on and then you take it off and they feel absolutely parched. Like I think the effect after taking it off was even worse than when I had it on. There are some more comfortable liquid lipsticks out there. The M Cosmetics Lip Clouds, um, the Bare Minerals Gen Nude. Here's the thing that I just kind of picked up on a whim one of the last times I was in at Walmart. It's the Rimmel Radiance Brick. I know they've made things like this before. I don't think it was exactly named Radiance Brick, but it had kind of like the strips of color in here. And the reason why I felt like this was kind of new was because they had at least three different shade options. And I saw this one labeled dark and I just kind of wanted to grab it because I thought, I wonder how dark and intense that really is. Now, as you can see from the way the tops of these little like uh, Hershey bar nuggets have been rubbed off, I've been using this a lot. I've been trying to use this a lot, but I have to actually scrub my brush across it. Look, there's the swatch on my finger. Where? It's barely there. And this is the dark shade. This is the thing that maybe a deeper skin tone would see. Okay, they've got a light one, a light medium, a dark one. I think I'll go for the dark. And they would get this home and not even see it. I have to work to make this even show up a little bit on my skin. And I am kind of bummed about this because it seems like it might be a really natural look on the skin, like just because of the finish of the product. Not 100% matte, but I see no shimmer either. And I thought, wow, a nice little satin finish bronzer. I thought it was probably going to be great, but you can hardly pick up any color off of that, so I would steer clear. My last thing is downstairs in the bathroom, so I'll just talk about it here. Um, I saw that Equate, Walmart's brand, is making their version of the Tresemme Tray 2 hairspray, which I absolutely love Tresemme's hairspray. That is my go-to hairspray. I have strayed here and there. I've used some kind of anti-humidity thing from, I think it was L'Oreal, and that was okay. But for my fine, doesn't want to curl hair, the Tresemme has always been the best. This Equate do is not the same. First off, the smell is bad. Hold your nose, hold your breath while you're spraying it, and just try not to engage with the scent. It's not good. And then it doesn't really hold. I felt like I was putting moisture in my hair somewhat, but not the actual hold that the normal Tresemme would give. I don't know how to explain it. I was putting a decent amount of product on, but where was the hold? I really wanted to see that stuff work, but it did not work, and I will be repurchasing my normal Tresemme next time. So six hits, six misses. A very evenly split best in beauty, or maybe I should call it best in beauty, I, I'll have to retitle this somehow. But what was kind of cool, we did have a save, you know, with one of the things, the Becca little kit. There is a better option out there, so that was cool. But I love you guys so much. Thank you for spending time with me today. I love when you give me product recommendations or other things that you've been loving in the comments section so I can try them too. But have a great day, and I will talk to you later. Bye!